Behind the numbers and the immigration rhetoric, there's a human reality. It's not just about what happens to immigrants when they reach the United States. It's also about why hundreds of thousands of people are leaving South and Central America every year. I'm joined now by Laura Carlson, director of the Americas Program for the International Relations Center. It's a progressive think tank. She's in Mexico City. Laura Carlson, welcome to On the Map. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Now, you've called Mexico the world champion in exporting its own people. I want to talk about the migration question behind the immigration debate. With 11 million Mexicans living in the United States, what are the reasons for this massive migration of Mexicans north? The dynamic for immigration to the United States is really very simple. In Mexico, there's a tremendous deficit in decent jobs, and the United States is hiring. So many people find that their only option to gain a livelihood for their families is to go to the United States. In Mexico, since the beginning of the North American Free Trade Agreement, and that's a critical point in this entire debate, we've accumulated about a six million person job deficit. And that's the difference between formal jobs that have been created in the economy and the number of jobs that are needed according to the number of people entering into the workforce. In the United States, it used to be thought that a few companies were hiring undocumented workers in order to gain a competitive edge. Mm -hmm. But now what we see that not just a few companies, but in many industries and in service sectors, the use of undocumented labor is a critical global competition strategy. Basically, it's on the same lines as outsourcing. What companies are saying is, why go halfway across the world to exploit third world workers if we can do it at home? Let's, let's talk a little bit about the remittance economy, the money that workers in the United States send home to, to Latin America and, and, and other places. Uh, according to the Inter-American Development Bank, uh, last year immigrants in the U.S. sent $62 billion to Latin, home to families in Latin America for the first time surpassing aid from north to south. What's the role of the, of the remittance economy in Latin America? Remittances, and particularly in Mexico, which receives $23 billion last year of that money, in Mexico it's second only to petroleum as a source of outside revenue. So it's become a major factor in the Mexican economy. Now the problem with that is it can never be a development pro a policy. Most of these remittances are sent home to families who are very poor, many as I mentioned in the rural sector, and they subsidize consumption. They've been the main reason that many families have been able to rise out of extreme poverty over the last years. However, they do not create jobs, and they create a self-fulfilling fulfilling cycle mm -hmm. where more family members are required to go abroad to send home remittances. Let's talk about the people who are being sent back following the money that's being sent back. The uh, Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency in the States, the, the ICE, calls its ongoing deportation program Operation Return to Sender. What does that language tell you about the way that, the, the, the way that immigrants are being presented in the American conversation? As a result of the name, the insensitive name of this series of raids on immigrant communities, I have called this referring to migrants as globalization's junk mail. Essentially what they're assuming is that there's a sender, a receiver, and an object, and that object is a migrant. The result is this, is that they have raids, they've rounded up at least 13,000 people just in this operation alone, and they are taking into account none of the factors of community and family that we would consider basic to human existence. In some case, cases, people have been rounded up and their children have been left without parents and without even immediate child care. In other cases, they've separated families and it's taken ages before they've even known what happened to their relatives. So it's also not taking into account that these people are working and they're playing a role in the United States society and that they need to come to a solution that recognizes their human agency and their importance in both economies. Laura Carlson, thanks for being on the map. Thank you very much.